Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <sighs> Dire team ban. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My name is Dragon Drop, and this is the We Play League Season Three. We are on to our American division here. The Power of Friendship takes on Team Arcan, a North American duel here. Even though we've got a couple of standards here on the side of POF, I'm still happy to have this game to be able to show you, as it should still be a pretty decent one. Arcan, probably the favorites going into this year with uh, some decent success. Uh, over the past couple of days, but hey, Power Friendship, don't count them out just yet. Both of these teams do could you really use a win in the group stage so far, both of them at 1 and 3, so it's not the best record, but hey, we'll see what happens today. My co-caster for tonight is once again Android, also known as Annie. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing super good. Super excited to get into the NA region. Got to represent my home turf, and certainly Archon and Power of Friendship are two of the strongest teams so far, so let's see how they match up against each other. Yeah, I already see Archon taking a little bit of time in their draft. They have a little bit of extra bonus time as Power of Friendship was a little bit late. Uh, of course, they've been playing with Slicks uh, for the past Dia couple of games. Back. So he's kind of a, a, a common stand in here. Zeus, though, joined them only today, just a little bit late to the party. That's why they got a little bit of a draft penalty going there. But Team Archon yeah, taking quite some time banning out the uh, banning out the Earthbird because yeah, they really know that way too likes to run that hero apparently. Yeah, he's run it a lot, and his win rate is super uh, incredible on it. Uh, if we go back to Ziz, he was the carry on Complexity at TI5, and he was on Leviathan for a brief stint, so this guy certainly making himself known in the NA scene, and, well, now he's standing in for Power of Friendship, and let's see what he can do there. Yeah, so this Enchantress first pick. I mean, we don't have to talk too much about the bands, I suppose, uh, unless you want to bring uh, bring up some Five something specific. But this Enchantress, it's only something that I've seen in the American scene. Why, why do you think that is? Uh, I think I've actually seen Enchantress in the CIS scene and in the SEA scene during the Shanghai qualifiers. I think she can get into a lane, she's super survivable, and it, once it comes to late game, when she has that max untouchable, it is really, really hard to lock her down and take her out of the fight, and obviously the impetus can be absolutely lethal from far away, especially if she builds up that Dragon Lance. Uh, and as far as Team Archon goes, uh, Mu loves to play that Enchantress in the off lane. Very high win rate on that as well, so hopefully going to be him picking that up, but Power of Friendship, maybe looking to punish it with Invoke who has some really nice crowd control. Five yeah, absolutely. Invoker is one of these uh, kind of more common heroes that we see up against the Enchantress. Well, in general, it's obviously Team very Arcan strong one to pick up, very versatile, can run him in any any sort of capacity. He's always going to be able to bring you a lot of control and also damage and also burst damage if you go for a quasi exhort route with the Sunstrike that you really, really need to finish off the Enchantress. And yeah, Bane to go with that. Pretty solid pick as well, able to stabilize the lane if you should need some help in mid lane, set up sun strikes all across the map. I really like this opening from POF here. Ten seconds yeah, I think they have really strong potential for ganks, but the Bane pickup isn't really that common for them, uh, just in terms of what their supports have picked up before. We see Mario, who's not going to be playing in this one, usually picking up the Disruptor on Dying, and uh, way too sexy, usually likes that Earth Spirit, uh, Tusk, Tran, Dazzle, so uh, it's really not common for them to pick up the bane but i think it can combo very very well especially if they get another hero with a lot of uh team fight lockdown yep yeah. uh, uh absolutely yeah bane doesn't, doesn't necessarily fit into the mold of as you said like the uh, like the earth spirit these kind of heroes or tasks that kind of want to run around make flashy plays but yes. can still as you said set up for everything else and yeah speaking of the task team, team archon actually pick it up and I want to say it's been a while since I've seen that hero being played, actually, because maybe just because there's so many other heroes that people like to play and try out. But the Tusk he hasn't been nerfed too hard, and he's still doing quite uh, doing what it does quite Ten well, I would say, remaining. which Absolutely. is rope around the map and be a, be a nuisance. Such a nuisance, like you brought up. Uh, it looks like that's going to be a white beard Tusk. That's a hero he likes to play a lot. You've mentioned it's a super strong initiator, and Team Archon, their playstyle is really all about picking up one big strong core, taking it way late game, and building up incredible team fight around that core. Tusk is certainly a way to get that started. Snowball Ice Shard's initiation is pretty hard to beat. Yeah. So in terms of cores, what do you think of it? I mean, obviously we see a couple are already banned out with Lone Druid, Faces Void, and now the Gyrocopter, so Juggernaut's still in the pool if they don't ban it out, Spectre's still in the pool. 
Uh, what, what kind of liner do you think uh, Archon is going for? Do they just uh, want to go for the hard farming Spectre or something else? Remaining. Well, I think Archon, they do typically like to pick up that one Five huge core remaining. and build their lineup around that. Um, I'm not quite sure they could potentially pick up, you know, the Drow, uh, the Juggernaut still in the pool, like you mentioned. They've run the Morphling recently, uh, as well as the Gyrocopter, which is banned out. But I think the Morphling might actually be a pretty solid hit pick here. Hard to lock down, uh, able to remnant all around the map, or not remnant, my goodness, the little, little water dude, all around the map to get some hard <laughs> yeah. farming potential, clearing out the lanes, uh, and definitely going to be hard to get a hold of and clear out. Yep. Yeah. So that is absolutely true. Remaining. So yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see if they want to go for that. Same time, power French and that, that enigma ban. Remaining. A little bit curious, I think, because that that's the area that we have seen every once in a He's while come out. And they can still make these kind of big plays if you manage to get a good big uh, a good black <gasps> hole. Do you, do you think it's just uh to make Gaia sure that it's pick. yeah? I, I don't know. Do you, do you think that's <clears throat> that's just to make sure that Arkham can just do what they want to in terms of running at them, not having to fear this big, uh, big BKB piercing lockdown? That especially since the Power Friendship already have the bane for that on a single target. Absolutely. I think they want to get the Enigma out of the pool because that's something that can really hinder Archon's team fight. They don't want to have to be afraid to just charge five men into Power of Friendship, and remaining. well, when there's no black hole on the field, that's a little bit easier to think about. Five right, seconds um, if, you look, if you look at Power French's secondary bands now in the second phase, we do see the Death Providence as well as the Lina band. Both of those obviously very strong mid heroes. And Archon hasn't picked up the mid yet, unless they want to run the Enchantress there or so, something silly. Um, and especially with the Bane, that should put a lot of pressure on them, right? I mean, wh what kind of mid do you still go for here? I mean, it's still OD, it's still Viper. Do these work against Invoker? On the side of Archon? Yeah. Well, I think uh, their mid guy's going to be Slicks here, and I think you can pick up uh, the Lina, which was banned out already, but the Quap and the Razor are still picks that he's gone with before, and I think that can be very strong. We are going to have a Night Stalker pick up here. I think that's going to be in the off lane. Um, so I, I think that can be very, very strong. Going to be a very controlling gank lineup here on Power of Friendship. They're going to go in, and they're going to get kills right away. Yeah, could be the off lane, could be the full position way to hero, just... Uh... I can encountering out the task. It's the kind of problem is that you are only good half the time. That being said, though, task needs a couple remaining. of levels to really get going. Night Stalker does as well, but Five once the first nighttime hit, he's gonna have his level three or level four at least, depending on uh, how much experience he has and stuff like that. And Reserve at that point, he can be much, much more effective assessment. than a task can be. So that's something that you have to look out for, and that's something potentially that puts a lot of extra pressure on what, on the middle lane here for Team Archon. They pick up the Temple Assassin, which is a, a good choice, I think. Fairly defensive uh, and fairly survival up against the Invoker, who doesn't have too much damage over time early on. Yeah, I love this Templar Assassin pick. Probably going to be played by Monkeys Forever here in the mid lane. Power of Friendship, though, they pick up a Darkseer, which is a much more typical offlaner, so this is probably going to be a position for Night Stalker. Uh, definitely roaming around with the Bane, seconds. trying to get early lockdowns, early kills, but like you mentioned, he's very reliant on the nighttime, so once daytime Five rolls around, remaining. Power of Friendship lose a little bit of their kill power. Yeah. That being said, though, with the Darkseer and the Night Stalker, plus the Bane setting it up, they have so much kill power during nighttime that it's almost more than worth it, above average, I would say, because you're not just uh, going to have a Night Stalker running at you, it's going to have Surge, so even more movement speed outside of the Hunter of the Night. It's going to have an Iron Shell to take you down wherever you go. It's also going to make it hard for TA, if that uh, if that's the combo, that if they can make that Ten kind of stuff work, to Timbersaw. just rely on Infraction to stay alive. So now they're going to go for Timbersaw, highly back. mobile hero. It's not one that I haven't have seen in a while, but I, I, I really like it here. A lot of burst, a lot of mobility, and just solid, straight up solid here for Team Archon. Yeah, I think Team Archon, their strategy right now is just kind of avoid the gank lineup. The power of friendship are going to be throwing at them. So Timber saw super mobile, just timber chain out of anything spooky, and well, he'll be good to go. He can definitely be survivable in lanes, build up some items, grab that bloodstone, and carry into the late game here. Uh... The one thing though that kind of throws me a loop here is the kind of lands that Team Archon want to go for now, be, uh, go for now, because Timbersaw usually did that offlane position, which I would have thought the Enchantress uh, to want to grab hold of. Is this just a jungle Enchantress, solo support task, and then perhaps a safe laner, or is that going to be a one position Timbersaw? 
I'm thinking we're still going to see a safe laner here. I think Team Archon want to pick up a super stable farming core. Obviously, they have some wiggle room for this. I wouldn't actually be surprised to see 2-1-2 two, two lanes and throw Timbersaw and Enchantress together in the off lane, but uh, she certainly can just kind of sit in the jungle, grab some creeps, get that level 6, and go hunting. Five seconds remaining. All right, five more seconds until the power of friendship have to show us the next ban. It's going to be the Medusa. Team well, think about hard back. farming cores. That's definitely one of them. Maybe not the one <laughs> that is the most popular these days, but hey, it's out of the pool now. So, I mean, I guess, I guess they could have still picked up an anti mage if they, if Archon really would have picked a Medusa. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, I mean, anti mage is. Potential. Uh, I'm not sure Team Archon were going to go for the Medusa. I think Medusa is one of those heroes that does pretty well with the babysitter. And well, Archon, they don't really have any babysitters on their lineup right now. Yeah. Kind of also precludes a Spectre here. So I'm th still thinking Juggernaut, which is also still in the pool. Or maybe in something like a Slark. Once again, highly mobile, able to get out of tough situations. And if you see the Bane coming, if you see the Night Stalker coming, you can get the Dark Pack going just to make sure that uh, a Nightmare or a Silence from Night Stalker is, is, is not going to ruin your day. Ten so, remaining. Uh, something I'm looking for, team, uh, for a team mark on right now. Power Five Friendship, they still remaining. need a one position core themselves. <laughs> they can have similar kind of uh, thoughts, but they're going to go with the Morphling here. As you said, very mobile. With his ultimate here, if he uses this properly, he can split push people to death, he can blow people up. Um, the question is, is he gonna get off the ground? I guess Darkseer, Nightstalker, and Bane should give him plenty of covering fire. Yeah, I mean, it depends where the Morphling is and where he's landing up against. If Morphling's up against an Enchantress, well, he's gonna have a pretty yucky time. We've got a Pugna on the field here. I... okay, that Pugna's gonna be played by Jo, so it is gonna be a core Pugna. And uh, that's oh, going to be uh, in the safe lane, most likely. I have not seen a core partner in a long, long time, but I can tell you it can be super, super ridiculous. I mean, there's not too much obvious combinations with it. Nothing like a Scar of Mage to just be able to blow someone up with your uh, a kind of two-hero shotgun combo that Morvlin could build up himself with E-Blade uh, and his nuke. So you kind of have a similar thing with the partner to grab a fire and any sort of magical nuke. Um, but still, it, it's giving them a lot of extra push on top of the Enchantress. And yeah, it just enables them to kind of try and fight back. I'm a little bit worried Ten though. Seconds remaining. Because it, it's still a Night Stalker. He's quite tanky. Darkseer can run Five rings around you. Remaining. Same for the Bane. There's just so much burst as well from Power of Friendship that if the Pugna does get caught out, he's got to be food. Absolutely. You said it. <laughs> All right. Something to note, this is going to be a support enchantress most likely as uh, well the offlaner is uh, going to be played by or playing Timbersaw so looks like our uh, enchantress will not be going in that very powerful offlane position that we see in NA so often. It's going to be played by Fluff and stuff and well maybe that'll be a little babysitter. All right, and with that, let us once again welcome you if you're just tuning in. My name's Dragon Drop, I'm John by Annie, and this is the We Play League Season 3, our first American game of the night. We're gonna have Shazam versus Enemy GG after this one, but for now, we've got Archon versus Power of Friendship. Let's take a look at the lineups. We've got J.O. here on the Pugna in the core position, Whitebeard on that task, looking to snowball, Monkeys Forever playing that mid Templar Assassin. Good fluff and stuff, as you mentioned, on the jungling slash roaming enchantress. And that only leaves Mu on the safe lane timber saw by the looks of it. So they won't go aggressive here. Yeah, well, on the side of the dire, we've got Power of Friendship starting things off. We've got MJW on this offlane Darkseer. Here up towards the top, we've got Way2 on the Bane. Snake King going to be playing that core Morphling. Towards the mid, we've got Slicks as a stand in mid invoker. And then finally over here, we've got Zizzy on the Night Stalker. Alright, so, uh, Archon, I'm still thinking about it. Uh, can I actually go aggressive here? I mean, you do have the enchantress who can aggressively jungle, quite, kind of hard to deal with the big creep early on. Uh, but, uh, I don't know, how do you feel about this? Because Pagna, as I said, he's very, very squishy. Oh, Even early on, on the way to actually, yeah, caught with the, uh, with the eye shots here. A lot of extra burst damage, so many right clicks came out. It should be the first blood right here. Brains have well, already used, and well, <laughs> yeah, he goes down. He pops down the sentry ward just as kind of a uh, a last final act, but he does end up going down. Uh, he gives the first blood away to the pugna, so that's gonna start off Jo real, real nice here. Already starting off with boots, mango, and some nice stable regen. 
The sentry gets immediately countered out as well, so Fluff does have that big creep available, so they can put on a lot of pressure on sneaking up on the top here whenever they want to, really. And yeah, the bottom lane, it's it's a Timbersaw. He's gonna be a little bit annoyed by the darks here, that's for sure, but he's kind of used to that on the offlane position, so... Shouldn't actually die here with the point into reactive armor and later down the timber chain, able to get him out of trouble. Yeah, here in the top, I think Morphling's gonna struggle just a little bit. Uh, we see the Enchantress rotating up into the enemy jungle. Uh, we've got the Pugna obviously able to put out a huge amount of damage, and then Whitebeard here on the Tusk can absolutely lock down that Morphling. Uh, Morphling does scale the, level the waveform, so has a little bit of escape there, but, well, that's not a whole lot. Yeah. I mean, even if you escape, well, you're, you're away from the wave, you're away from experience, away from gold, and this is probably the Archon's main goal here in this particular lane. Just shut down the Morphling, make sure that you get off to a good start, get early towers on the back of Enchantress and the Pugna, which is kind of playstyle that you need to go for. Yeah, Some people well, say overall... that... Yeah, go ahead. No, no, it's, it's your turn. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, some people say that if you, if you run a Pagna and the tier 1s are not down by 15 minutes, you're doing it wrong. Right. Yeah, I, just... I would agree with that. I mean, it's a little bit harsh, like you said, but... Um, towers are definitely going to be a key component. Here in the bot lane, we've got MJW diving very, very deep under the Radiant tier 1. Moo may be looking to punish that, but just kind of clearing out the creeps, going through, getting some farm here. The uh, problem for Moo is that he doesn't have a lot of control. He as I said, he should be able to stay safe, but he can't really do anything against MJW, just running at him, skipping the creeps with the Iron Shell. Now level 2 as well, so... Well, still doing a good job though. Reactive armor, level 2 into it. Still has plenty of region left. He's making sure to use the timber chain to get these last hits too, so yeah, he's actually close to the top of the uh, last hit chart as well, just because of all that. Well, here in this top lane, we've got a lot of heroes, but not a lot of action as people are just kind of taking it slow, allowing Snaking to get just a little bit of farm. He's been harassed away from the wave most of the time, courtesy of the Enchantress and Tusk. On, uh, but now we could see an initiation here as Whitebeard rotating very aggressively up near this tier 1 tower. The uh, problem is that Fluff doesn't really have the best ganking creeps. They e even got himself a Cobalt Fallbound, which might actually turn do the difference here. They get the Snowball on the way to in the back here, yeah, ignoring Morphling altogether. It's probably a good choice, that he can't really do much anyway. Bane both falls for a second time, and now they turn to the Morphling. He still has a Waveform available. So it can be another who tries to go for Fluff and stuff, but not quite enough burst damage. But he made his way into the trees, I suppose, so hey. Better stay in there for a while. Yeah, he's, he's gonna stay in the trees, afraid to show his face, because he knows there's a lot of backup here coming out. Now we've got Night Stalker rotating in, maybe looking to go on the Enchantress, but now nah, he gets spooked away. Morphling, well, he's back out of the trees, back under his tower, but Snake King certainly does not feel safe. That Bane has gone down twice now. He does have a mango, so he does have another waveform if necessary, but once again, he's not getting a whole lot. He's sitting at three last hits. And Morphling, not exactly the kind of hero that you think about when you think of comeback and farming potential. Yeah, I mean, Morphling has to be allowed safe farm, get steady kills throughout the game, pick up some awesome items, and then scale up from there. But, you know, Morphling doesn't play from behind very well. And here we see Snaking, another initiation here. We're going to see a Snowball connect. Ice Shards are not locking him in, but damn, he's taking some damage here as he morphs up some strength. Allows himself to live through the fight, but, well, he's probably got to head back to base. Yeah. Uh, well, he, he has a self, so he wants to stick around a little bit longer, way too back now, trying to keep him safe. But the one thing that is that they're looking forward to now is this night time. Just went in, Night Stalker. This is only level two, almost level three, though, with the bounty rune. He will be able to have the two points up into the void for that extra bit of burst, and well, perhaps a silence up against the Timber Saw. That is their target. Meanwhile, yeah, top, though, there's a smoke going, Fluff and Whitebeard. As Moo, There's yeah, going to be a rotation he's, he's in from the Night Stalker. So, this is scouted out a little bit, but it looks like it's still going to go through. The Snowball comes in, Bane is going to get stunned up, trapped in by the Ice Shards. He's trying to uh, get a little bit of help for himself with that Brain Snap, but he ends up going back on the back lines here. We've just got the uh, Dire Courier going to be picked off by the Enchantress Creep, or at least bullied a little bit. And now the tower looks like it could be the target here. Pugna doing what he can, maybe allowing Dire to get the deny here. And I think that's what Night Stalker's going for, but finally, it will go down, courtesy of that one final Nether Blast. Under also missing the fortify on that, it's gotta be hurting man. Obviously the glyph still refreshes, but... Well, it just goes to show how hard it is to actually deny up against the Pugna with 3 points up into the Nether Blast. But yeah, I actually also like the way they engaged this. They kind of left uh, left Enchantress alone when they saw the Night Stalker around. But 
Enchantress is the one hero, even now, even without points into Untouchable, just with two points up and- Oh god, they're gonna go again? Here's sneaking. Well, it's gonna get stunned up by Enchantress creep before it expires. Whitebeard going a little bit deep, and now Snowball dodged some of the damage from the waveform. It's going on this. Creeps is there to help him, but he's still all alone. They're running after him. And that should be Tusk going down eventually. Unless he can make some plays, blocking him off at the same time. Well, it's one of the map. There's some action as well, but hey, look at this top lane. Whitebeard gets some help from J.O. Now Ziz, well, he's out of mana. He's blocked in by creeps. And he will fall too, so all across the map, Archon is getting kills and kills and kills. Yeah, this is absolutely J.O.'s favorite game right now. He's 4-0-1 on the Pugna. He's already claimed a tower. He's poised to push the tier 2 anytime he wants. We're going to see another rotation in from the Morphling, but Snake King just having such a tough time farming. He's 8th on the net worth chart. That's not where you want your position 1 carry to be. We're going to go get a fluff. It does have a Mud Golem here, so do have that. A little bit of a stun here. Might need a little bit more for the waveform. That being said, though, they've managed to, to do... Uh, do snaking in quite well so far now with a wraparound. There's a stun here, wait for him out, and Fluff right next to him. But he does have tower aggro and he has to get the hell out of there now, especially with this road again. It is still nighttime. He does have the iron shot on top of him, plus the uh, smoke of the seed, so they want to make something happen, but Archon just not giving them the chance. Yeah, Archon going to be rotating out here, not wanting to get greedy, wanting to play this very calm and collected, and well, that's what they're doing here. The score is 7-0. to zero. Archon seems to totally have this game under control. It seems like almost every lane is going in their favor uh, in the mid. We haven't talked about it so much. It's been a pretty even trade back and forth. In fact, uh, Templar Assassin and Invoker sitting almost evenly on the net worth chart, uh, very comparable to each other, but, well, the top and bottom lanes have just been an absolute war ground. So... What, what do you think PUF need to do to try and come back into this game? I mean, they, their plan kind of failed. They haven't been able to set up anything with the Bane just because they've been under so much pressure. And the Night Stalker Nighttime, which is ending right now, has been less than satisfactory to say the least. I mean, he, he's still sitting at level 3. Hasn't really been able to find an opening either, so... What, what is their way back into this going into the mid-game? Well, I'd say Smoke Ganks, but we saw that first one was not so successful. I think they need to keep trying it every single night time. They need to get a pick. But speaking of picks here, well, we've got Archon smoked up and ready to go into the mid lane. Doesn't look like they're going to find anyone out just yet, but, well, that could change very soon. Uh, most likely want to wait until daytime either, but this is very good timing. He has licks, shows himself. Oh, well, he is not quite in range of snowball. Yes, there he is now. And there it is. Will hit. Monkey's Forever is there with the bit of damage. This is two. Trying to help. It's Lix. Well, he will get the tornado off actually, but not enough to keep him safe. Monkey's Forever on the run out. He has <laughs> Fluff as well as the Tusk on the wrong side of the map. Now four heroes behind that enchantress here. Only one point into Untouchable. But a uh, small little critters here. Healing him up for the time being. And this creep even doing some nice little AoE damage. Yeah, it looks like can even catch up to him. Muru is here now, joining the party, just throwing out a chakram. Not really giving it damn, but how many are here and now? Might even get sneaking here. Not quite enough damage here as he's he can still morph quite a bit of strength, but it does keep Fluff alive. So they do get the invoker, they only lose the tusk. Well, that's certainly a fantastic trade if you're Archon. You don't really mind giving up your Initiator Tusk, because his job is trying to be the front line, jump into every fight, and uh, you know what? Once he gets a spell off, it doesn't matter if he goes down, but the levels are not ideal here on Archon, just courtesy of the rotation. Tusk just hit 6, Enchantress is still level 4, uh, fluff and stuff. Spending a lot of time in lanes, but not really soaking that XP, so once that uh, Impetus is skilled, there's going to be a lot more damage coming out on the side of the Radiant. There we are. That's the re probably the reason why we see Fluff now uh, inside the jungle farming up a little bit once you get to level 6. Recognizing that there's only so much that you can gain from these kind of early rotations. It's all already 10 minutes in. I mean, they've taken the mid-tier 1 tower. And the bottom lane is actually also uh, quite in peril soon here once once Jay maybe wants to go down there instead of still sticking around in the top lane here. Not really worried about anything at all. They should, should be able to easily finish it off too. Looks like Templar Assassin's going to be going for a blink first item. I think that's a fantastic pick. The mobility is going to be great against Power of French, but especially at nighttime when you've got a hungry Night Stalker running at your back, having that blink is just going to give you that much more distance and allow you to set up the fights that you want. Looks like Slicks might be in some trouble. He's going to get pinged out. There's an Invis rune bottled up by TA, so she could rotate whenever she wants, and she's dishing out a fair amount of damage, especially with that Meld Strike. 
And there's a watch coming down. Whitebeard sees everything that's going on. Slicks now will be the counter initiation there. Look at this death with this ward doing so much work here. Invoker died, died already. Ziz and MTW though with the double iron shell, they're doing quite some work in the other direction here. They get both kills, but not before one last another blast takes out a Night Stalker. So two for two trade. Still in favor of POF here considering the way the game has been going so far. Plenty of gold going the way of the Morphling of all people. Yeah, that's definitely something they need, but down bottom looks like Enchantress picks herself off a tower and Timbersaw feeling no fear going up against this Bane who's still level 5, so it's going to be no Fiend's Grip to lock anyone down yet. I think you mentioned, yeah, overall those kills were great for Power of Friendship, but they are still definitely playing from behind. Looking at the net worth and the gold graphs, well, the net worth is over 7,500 in favor of Arkham, which is a lot for 11 minutes in the game. Absolutely, 7.5k gold, 4k experience. That's something that you can't expect. Maybe 20 minutes in, the game goes bad, but this early oh, it's, uh, it's not exactly, yeah, not got exactly a good coming sign. in. Connecting onto Snake, and we've got Whitebeard, he's got the Walrus Punch, we're gonna have J.O. trying to use that Life Drain. Now Snake King going into the trees, is gonna TP and will get out just fine, but uh, that just leaves Archon here in the lane, uh, unobjected. They're just gonna go and clear the creeps and get more farm for themselves, so Power of Friendship, they've gotta start rotating in and getting these key picks right away, or I think Archon's just gonna snowball out of control. Literally and Smoke. figuratively. <laughs> Smoking again here to find another wall. Sneaking though, he's low on everything here. Does something away from him. Does get it off? Yeah, he will. This feeds good though on white beard on the back. Jayo gives him a little bit, like, a little bit of help before he gets signed up, so he will have to let this task go at the same time. Once more, he wants sneaking here, barely surviving to that nether blast here. Nightmare keeping Jayo away, but now Moon coming into the frame might be able to find a couple of timber chains to catch up to this, but it is night time now. One point up into Hunter the Night, but she does still feel right. Same time, they do find Fluff in the back. He has Licks with the Cold Snap. Plenty of damage into this. Now, Moo finds himself. Uh, nice little pinata there. Does a lot of AoE damage. Not quite enough to bring anyone down. And now, Nightmare on him. Turn around, perhaps. Way to get sucked off by Jaya. Now, Slicks. <laughs> still looking for more. He doesn't quite have the cooldowns to make everything work. And now, this finally in his element. Iron Shell plus Night Time, everyone running away from you. This is what a night. This is Night Stalker's dream here. A little bit late, but still coming into the game right now. Yeah, I mean that's what Power of Friendship need to do all the time, every single night time. They need to be grouped up. They need to be rotating. But at what cost? Here, Templar Assassin now picking up that Desolator. So that's going to be our first big item. That armor reduction is going to be absolutely awesome in an aura. Going to help out pretty much every one of the teammates and going to help push towers very quickly. So. I guess here's the question, is this going to be a quick game or a, sh a very long game? Because Archon, well, I think they have the power to win the late game if they control the Morphling like they've been doing. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, for Archon, I would say like they don't really mind taking the blade if they if they can keep this kind of lead. I mean, we were talking about how uh, how Pac-9 kind of wanted to take the Tion Towers early, and they definitely did that. Uh, they can start to move on to the tier 2, so even Roshan right now, with the massive amounts of mind summon that they have, um, yeah, from Monkeys forever with the Desolator and the Melt Strike, so this Roshan falling pretty damn quickly, PUF on the wiser, and yeah, with that they should be able to take the tier 2s and close this, out, close this game out very early. I still think they should be able to... Uh, do well in later parts of the game just because they do have that enchantress to do with the timber saw that can get super tanky, but they don't need to at the same time. Yeah, I mean, Snaking and the Morphling, now he's farming, he's trying to do what he can. He does have that Perseverance, he's gonna be going for that Lincoln Sphere first item, and, well, slap it on the towers, but, I mean, it's a tier one. Meanwhile, Moo in the bottom lane, gonna be trying to do some damage here to MJW, but Zizzy's here, there's gonna be a wall thrown out. Looks like Moo oh. might be victim, there's gonna be a Sunstrike coming through, Invoker gets the kill. Fantastic job by Flix, and, well, now... Yeah, fantastic timing too, he just got his bloodstone, so it's immediately down 5 charges, but hey, at what cost, once again, mid tier 2 is down, yeah, Archon, they're unfazed, they want to take a tier 3, already doing quite a bit of damage here between the Desolator, as well as the Nether Blast, all the while being covered up by the Nether Ward in the back, and yeah, this tier 3, might end up falling here if PUF can't find, can't find an angle. Yeah, Monkeys Slicks Forever really have the many control spells. Yeah, look at tier 3 is down, range racks also dropping quite low, 50 minutes into the game. And another blast, couple of right things, should do the tricks, Lixie actually walking in, what's that pathing? He didn't want that to happen, now nice little back here, no wall follow up though. This punch up in the air, 
just chasing him away. Moves coming back into the fray here. They want to bring down Nether War, but it's being the grabified now waiting once again. Like so often already in this game. Caught with the ice shots. And that'll only secure the mid set of racks and the 15 GG. minute GG. Holy mackerel, that was a fantastic performance by Archon. They got in, they got towers, they got kills, and I mean, power of friendship, what were they supposed to do against that? Their gank-oriented lineup, well, it just doesn't work if you're down so far in farm, if you're so deficient on levels that you don't have ultimates by, you know, 10 minutes in. I think this is just a great performance by Archon, and, well, a good way to introduce the NA scene. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it did expect a good game. <laughs> Quite expect that kind of a good. I mean, I did expect a good performance from Archon, but I didn't think there would be that stomping. A 15-minute victory is something that you can write on your resume <laughs> uh, if you really want to. But hey.